Developed by BuzzMonkey Software, this untitled South Park game was in development through 2005. Each of the three builds that I have are all from around March of 2005, but we're just taking a look at the earliest one today. To clear up things before we get started, yes, there are PS2 button prompts. This is for a mix of reasons. The first being that this is a prototype of a game where the lead platform was the PS2, so it simply makes sense. Second, it was reported that the developers like to use PS2 controllers anyway, even on the Xbox, so why not have the button prompts? Also, you may notice that some of these sound effects sound mighty familiar. They are likely taken right from the Simpsons hit and run as the developers often borrowed assets in development, plus many likely came from the same sound packs anyway that developers purchase a lot. The developers were instructed that they were essentially to make a Simpsons hit and run clone, plus 20%, and they were instructed to do this in a very, very short time frame. On top of the hit and run mechanics, they were layering on a Zelda style adventure game, where acquiring certain items would open up parts of the town. You'll see that I am not going to go into a lot of what the project was going to become and the state it was in when it was cancelled, as Liam, aka Tomaki, aka Dr. Cupcakes, who contributes to Unseen64 among other places, will be focused on that in a bit of a dual video, so do be on the lookout for that. There are many elements inside of the build that don't actually show up in gameplay, too. Towley, for instance, has texture files, and one developer reported that he would have been around the mental hospital as he tried to lock the gate. There are also music files hidden, including Brian Boitano, Swiss Colony Beeflog, the classic Spider-Man theme, Goldfinger Superman, Particle Man, Hitler Bad Vandal's Good, Mammal from There Might Be Giants, Aliens Exist from Blink-182, and a few other short clips. It's worth noting that none of these clips were licensed at this point of the game's development, as the focus was on creating a vertical slice of gameplay so that the gameplay itself could be approved by those who were in charge. One last thing before we get into the game builds. The developer that I spoke to wasn't really sure how much Matt and Trey, the creators of South Park, knew about the game, so it certainly wasn't their voices. Some of the voices were done by actors that worked on South Park, but not Matt and Trey themselves. The only time Matt and Trey really show up in this build is when they use clips directly from the show. So no new voice acting here, sorry. Let's talk briefly about Patreon for one minute. After the BC video hit, tons of you decided to show your support for P2P Online and game preservation. Three new supporters have shown up since the last video, including David, Jack, and Ryan. That money goes directly into preserving more games like this, and hopefully some unseen games we've never heard of before. Thanks again for your continued support. We're going to start with a build called RR Spark. This is build 656, dated March 11, 2005, and it's the earliest build that we have. We start by going to the new game function. This loads a cutscene with the mayor. Unfortunately, there are no voices and it crashes after the cutscene is over. Next up is Mission 1. You've already seen the full mission on the YouTube channel, so I'm not going to show you the whole thing. Instead, I'm going to show you what happens when we tweak with the settings a little bit. But first, take a look at this chalkboard. This is essentially exactly what's going to be happening during this first mission, if things work properly. Unfortunately, they don't. And let's get a nice close-up view of this. Find the retard costume, get on the short bus, ride to the mental house, and find a straitjacket. So despite them not working, we're going to try and enable some of the other functions of this build and see what else is hiding. Right now, I'm simply going about my business, collecting most of the parts of the costume. As you'll see in a minute, I'm going to jump between areas. Now we can jump outside of Cartman's house, outside of the mental hospital itself, but before, basically a few days ago, I wasn't able to get the mental house to load. It would load to a blank screen. So let's take a look at what happens when we jump to the outside. 
Right now, it still says that we need to complete the costume. Ideally, we'd be able to load the short bus mission so we could drive to the mental house, but things just don't seem to work out how I'd like them to. Next up, we jump to the outside of the mental house so we can get a real good look of what it would have looked like. I do end up jumping inside of the mental house because I managed to get it to load, but something's missing, so I'm going to start over with this mission and see if I can change it up a little bit. So we've cut back to the middle of mission one, we've picked up another part of the costume, and we're just kind of hanging around the house. What I'm going to do differently this time is I'm going to jump directly to the mental hospital. This is going to have a result that I certainly didn't expect when I first got the game. All of a sudden, Cartman is fully clothed in his uh, retard outfit. You can see our mission has changed to running around trying to find the straight jacket. So I'm going to run around this mental house a little bit, see if we can find the straight jacket. Alright, I'm going to just spoil it now. Unfortunately, the straight jacket isn't here, so this would signal the end of our mission. Once we get upstairs, though, we'll see something that should look a little familiar if you saw the first leaked cutscene from this game about a year ago. And here we go. This looks to be the room that the cutscene was built upon. This is where you'd see Cartman strapped down to the table. And with the mental health professionals, we'll call them. Uh, doing their treatment to Cartman. Unfortunately, there is no trigger for that cutscene because there is no straitjacket, but I think that's a pretty safe assumption. The last real thing of note in the mental house are these bouncy rooms. Cartman can bounce around the padded walls all he likes. Perhaps they should send him to one of those in the show. Surprisingly, in this build, the doors do happen to work, so we're going to take a little stroll outside of the mental house. I'm going to hop in a car, see what we can see. It should be fairly obvious that the textures don't load properly. I think a lot of this has to do with them trying to load textures for different distances, and the textures just don't exist. This is actually a dead end right here, so I'll get turned around and we'll drive a little bit before we cut to something new.
This is a bit of an area that I don't think was shown very much in the other videos. For some reason, the junkyard would have been one of the main areas of the game, along with the industrial zone. I don't know if that would have held true for the later builds, but they are pretty well detailed here, so I thought they were pretty important. Next up is a vehicle test mission. This loads some cars and immediately they are crashing into the bus. It features some basic geometry of the town. Warping around outside works, but if I had warped to one of those inside maps like Cartman's house or the mental house, it just doesn't load. It's just a big blank area. As you can see, Cartman is still the playable character, but that won't always be true as we move on throughout the builds. One cool note about all these worlds that we're seeing is that on the PS2 version, when it was hooked up to the PC, they could actually build the map as the game was being played. That includes building it on the PS2 itself and it would sync back to the PC build files. You could essentially drag and drop all the buildings. I think that's a quick way of building the world, and I'd be surprised if more developers don't do that today. Next up is one of my favorite areas in this build, the combat area. In the room, when you start out, was just Cartman and two boxes. If we click one of the boxes, you can see the dogs that we're now fighting. They kind of roll on their back when they're dead, I guess. The other box, which doesn't seem to have been used by the other people who had the game, loads some mental health professionals yet again, once we skip past that error anyway. These are two characters that, again, you saw in the cutscene. So that just shows that the mental house was indeed an area that would be used throughout the game's development. Most likely, anyway. You can see Cartman has some basic moves where he can punch. He can do this little hip drop thing. Well, that's about it. If you look really, really closely, you can see he gets his angry eyes when he starts punching a lot. I thought that was a nice little touch. Well, we can kill all the dogs and we can kill the male professional. The nurse herself doesn't seem to be able to be killed, so I give up here in a second. Next up we have what's titled the FX Mission. It loads a similar area to one of the previous zones, except there are no cars crashing into the school bus. Again, we have some basic geometry, but there's not a whole lot going on here. Most of these builds have a bit of a wide variety of cheats available. In this particular build, there is invincibility, infinite time, which doesn't work, naughty sensor, crazy people, crazy drivers, Spontaneous Combustion Mode, and Chili Town. We're now hopping into the debug menu and jumping around a little bit, which shows some of the more developed areas. Right now we're taking a look at the bus stop, which is kind of one of those iconic zones that you'd expect to see in a South Park game. We also take a look at some of the houses that are around. They're not very detailed, but you never know, you might recognize some. Right now I turned on the speedy mode so we can get around a little bit quicker so we can see a little bit more with the limited amount of time that we have. Next up is the title screen that's in this build. As you can see, we have load game, new game, a bunch of other options, including the debug menu, which is accessible here. A lot of the settings don't really work right, but if we toggle the free cam, you can see how menus and video games are made. Essentially, it's a bit of a little diorama. It'd be a waste of polygons to load the rest of the world. The options mode is there, but nothing actually works. New game, easy, normal, expected, settings. Load game doesn't do a thing either.
We're back to load the character test mission. This is neat because we're no longer controlling Cartman, but rather we're controlling Kenny. Not only that, Kyle and Stan seem to follow Kenny around. It's a bit hard to see, but I think that's a pretty neat feature. Cartman, rather the two Cartmans, just stand there doing nothing. But I guess that's probably a better day for Kenny. Maybe he won't die. Next up we have the beginning of a multiplayer mode. Only the bus on the top half of the screen is controllable. And you can see I just kind of bump into Kenny and Kyle. It takes place in the junkyard, but what I really liked and was actually really hard to see on the screen I play on is that there's this big, big tunnel that goes underneath the junkyard. As you can see, it's getting a bit red, so you'd like to think that it's getting hot, hot, hot. As we come through the end of the tunnel, we can see that we're loading into what looks like hell almost. I don't know if Satan would make an appearance in the game or not. I do think there's a file or two from him. I highly doubt that it would have anything to do with this multiplayer mode. But it's interesting to see how they started to put together these levels to make it more interesting than just a basic junkyard. Next up is a thing called Map Test 1. Here is an entirely different map than the village that we saw before, and it was likely more of a test bed for the developers. In this particular version, we do have a pavement texture, which doesn't always show up on some of the later builds. Here we can just kind of drive around looking at some gray empty boxes. While some of the other builds, and even some of the maps on the same build, occasionally have labels on them which say what houses are which even though they don't have their textures this one is just completely gray last but not least on this build we have what is a basic test mission Cartman spawns inside the wall but that's okay essentially all we have to do is go and find a nice checkered flag I turned off the debug text just so you can see just how pretty this little flag is And that's it, the mission is completed. Where is George Bush when you need him? Surprisingly, the initial cutscene does load here, and perhaps even more surprisingly, it doesn't crash at the end and loads directly into the mission in Cartman's house. As you can see, game development is a bit of a messy process. Things that work when you load one mission may not load when you load another mission, but that's okay. For now, if you would like, load up Let's Get Retarded and listen to this as you watch this part of the video, because that's what the developers had playing in the background. This about wraps up this video, though. I hope you've enjoyed this look at one of the three builds of this unreleased South Park game. I realize that there's just too much content to go around, and I don't want to make one one-hour-long video, so I'm going to split it up into two or three, I think. Hit that subscribe button, check us out on Patreon, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.